Hi, it's Hazel and welcome to my channel. I am tickled pink to be part of the lineup of creators who are taking part in Angela, the Traveling Crafters, uh, Give a Scrap April Hop. Try say that three times fast. Um, so I am scheduled for April 10th. I'm taping this ahead of time, so I've only seen, uh, I think, three of the videos so far, but I'm impressed. I, um, uh, it's, it's, um, I'm grateful for the invitation, and, you know, at the risk of sounding a bit like a fangirl, can I just say that, sorry, I'm pulling some loose threads here, can I just say that it almost starts to feel like a person has arrived, in quotes, when they are a part of an event that includes the likes of Diane Hubert. Uh, of course, there are many other people on this list, and it will be in the description box. There are many other people on this list that I consider friends. There are many people that I am unaware of. So I'm looking forward to um, checking out their channels, um, becoming subscribers, because of course, in addition to sharing a whole bunch of ideas of how we can use the scraps that are part of our daily lives, um, the the um, collateral benefit to all of this should be receiving, uh, seeing our own subscription numbers uh, rise as well. So if you are finding me for the first time uh, because of this event, um, well, welcome, number one. And number two, I hope that you find enough uh, value here that you choose to hit the subscribe button. And of course, as one of the <laughs> rules of engagement with this event, um, if you watch every single video, um, if you like and comment on every single video, and I'm, <laughs> I think the impl implication or the, the implied message is if you subscribe, um, then you are entered in um, the draw for the journal that Angela is um, giving away. So enough about that. Oh, I should say that I am following Jovi from Creating with Jovi. And um, Carol from The Crinkled Path is um, the person, uh, April 11th person. Oh, and if I could be permitted one tiny little commercial. Um, I am, on April 11th, I am a guest seller on Angela's live sale. So I'll be joining Angela, the Traveling Crafter, and Carol from Crinkled Path Journals uh, as a seller. And that begins at 3 p.m. Central Time. So I, uh, <laughs> I've been working my butt off getting stuff ready. Anyway, enough about that. Now, um, I am the proud owner of a couple of journals from Claire at the Purple Poppy. And the last journal I bought from her, when I did a flip through, I saw these things. And I was... I was gobsmacked because I thought it's, they're very attractive, but <laughs> they're also pretty well nothing but scraps because the core structure here is an envelope. So, oh, let me just bring down this sort of sample journal that, and of course this doesn't, it's not going to look particularly good in this journal, but because the aesthetic is totally different. But the concept is that this beauty just nestles around, wraps around um, both sides of a journal page. Now, um, We'll talk a bit about dimensions soon, but you can see, beautiful, 
beautiful. And it doesn't, um, or at least I haven't had any problem with it staying in place. I don't know if it's sufficiently heavy, um, sufficiently big, that it it's not going anywhere. Now, this would not be the typical page you'd put it on because I have this flap going on here. You can see that in Claire's example, um, the, well, maybe I'll turn it this way because I don't know what you can see. You know, a significant amount of this um, trim and embellishing extends beyond the bottom of the page. So actually, maybe this would have been a better one to put here on a shorter page. But I mean, you, you get all that. So, oh, let me keep this nearby. So, of course, before I um, chose, I mean, I wanted to do this. I said it at the time of the flip through. I said it when I received the journal. I've got to do that. And of course, you know, life gets in the way. So I thought, well, let me try a prototype and just make sure I can do it smoothly, uh, you know, before um, <laughs> trying, trying to teach you. So, you know, I got purple on the brain right now because, of course, I'm working on purple journals. So um, this image is from a digital that I will be um, uploading <laughs> any day now. And, um, well, let's hook it on the page and I'll, I'll just describe it a bit. So, of course, well, be, let me show you. I uh, began with an envelope. And originally, when I was looking at my envelopes, I thought I would... <coughs> be able to show you one with windows and one without. Well, it turns out that I have far more in um, envelopes with, uh, with windows than I do these kind. And I also don't think, I mean, it could probably work, but I just, it, it would, the window would be obvious on the inside. Now, whether that bothers you or not, I guess, is you know up to you anyway so let's hook this baby on and i'll show you so i didn't have mine extend quite as far as claire's did oh full disclosure see this shiny bit here and here see this a couple of lindor chocolates were harmed in the making of this project just saying now, because I'm hooked on them, I saved this pink one, and I think it will still get used. But I did use the purple one. Okay, so this was a fussy cut I had a long time. That was part of a digital. There's book page. There's thrifted lace. Um, this purpley stuff here. Whoops. This is, I don't know. It doesn't feel exactly like, it feels kind of... I don't know, smoother, shinier. I, I don't know if this is typical uh, tissue paper or not, but I've used that there. Uh, this is a nut. No, this is another lace. This is off a thrifted garment. Oh, this background paper was wrapped around uh, a bouquet of flowers that I got for my birthday. Is this not beautiful stuff? I don't know if you can see that striation, those lines. The, the back side is beautiful, and I use some of it wrong side out. And, of course, the purple is uh, to die for. Okay. Um, maybe that's it for this side. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> on this side... Um, this fabric, it remember when sheer over blouses were the were the rage? I had one like this, so this is part of an old top of mine. Whoops, <laughs> can't get rid of it. So this fabric below there is all of that. Again, same paper, part of somebody's digital lace. 
tissue paper, some labels, a punch out, and of course this girl that will be is coming will be in a digital that I'll be uploading soon on 1930s fashion. Now because all the images were black and white, I used um, mauve uh, crayon dash um, soluble crayon. And then I went in with some additional uh, watercolor. This uh, is a flower die cut that I bought a long time ago. Well, a, a variety pack, variety of colors. Someone had, um, I guess, done some flower die cuts. And I bought them at a, at a <laughs> I was going to say a liquor store. I bought them at a thrift store, not a liquor store. Get a grip. Um, so then I also did another one. Same type image, uh, also black and white. This one I left alone. And I thought, well, okay, this, this will be... Don't tell me the hardest part of this whole thing is getting it on the page. Um, the... Um, I left this one black and white because I, I am, am collecting stuff for black and white journals. So I thought, well, let's be a purist and keep it black and white. So this black paper, I'm not even sure where it came from, but I will be, um, I will be using more of it in the one I do with you. Uh, doilies, of course, were thrifted. This stripy ribbon um, came from... A wedding kit this <laughs> hopefully you can't tell that this was Halloween um, trim there's skulls on there um, thrifted lace uh, thrifted trim so that's that side then on this side oh maybe we can see the top of a skull there I, I wrapped around the doily and the black paper, and then I just filled in with more of those same trims and laces. And this was a fussy cut magpie because, you know, they're essentially black and white. Um, so that, those are my samples. So let's get to it. So if you are a Costco member, you probably get the... Uh, Costco Connections magazine. Well, this was the image on the latest cover, and I loved it. And I cut around. Well, first of all, I backed it. And I did this days ago before I realized that, hey, I would be using it. I just saw something that I should fix. Um, <laughs> now, if you... So these are all succulents. So if you see this plant here, this drapey trailing one... If you have ever seen it, I think it's called uh, String of Pearls. They are beautiful. The little the little nodules are sort of about the the size of a uh, pea. Much more fun to have in your house than it is to fussy cut. Let me tell you, uh, this has been a wee bit painstaking. Uh, if you're looking very closely, you will notice that I did not do every single thing. And some of those little round circles may now have some square corners to them. But I just saw this big piece of background here that should be removed. So, as always, it might be time to change my blade. I love this little thing. And it does allow for some of this precision stuff. Although I realize that many people would rather poke themselves in the eye with a sharp stick than do what I'm doing right here. So let's just say I like it. If you're interested in it, I have uh, begun. I am now an Amazon. Of, I think that's a petal. Um, yeah, I am now an Amazon affiliate, so I will, if I can find it there, I will um, have this link along with others. And you know the drill. If you um, use my links, you don't pay any more, I get a small commission. 
um, and anything in that order will count. So it is a kind of an easy way to support creators that you uh, would like to help. Okay, so we, I said I would talk about size. Most of these, let me see, 10... With the dangly, the extended parts, these are just eight inches or a, a wee bit over. Now, again, most of us won't care if something nice like this extends top or bottom uh, off the page. But I thought there is so much detail here, and this is pretty, okay, this is from tip to tip is eight and a half by itself, never mind, um, anything else. So what I intend to do with this one is leave this envelope intact. And I think I measured, I, yeah, it's nine and a half. So we know that um, on a tall skinny that this uh, nine and a half could work. So that's what I'm, that's my thought process. Now, it is uh, a bit wide. And again, these are, you know, maybe I'm going into more detail that, than you need, but I guess it's a thought process that I use. So from this edge to this edge is four inches. So we know in a tall skinny, those pages may only be four and a half inches wide. So I don't wanna go much wider than this but yet I don't wanna, you know, get rid of the whole idea of this. So essentially, I think what, um, okay, I'm just gonna do it from this side with hopefully not too much of my, I guess my address is out there, so we'll not worry about that. So I'm just tearing this you know, both thicknesses at the same time. Okay, now, apparently this one, oh, it's magic. <laughs> I got the check out of this envelope without ever having opened it. It's truly a miracle. Okay, so basically, I guess that envelope, I must have glued it back closed or something. The only reason I'm not particularly worried about my address showing is that I am part of Kim Newberg's uh, Happy Mail movement, so my address is out there in the world. Um, I'm cut. I'm cutting this open just because it needs to be open in order for it to, you know, properly get around the page. Okay. So, on my examples and on Claire's, there were things extending beyond, and that is okay. So, I'll show you what I've gathered so far for the um, thing to use. Now, I thought that um, this looked good against black, but then that maybe is a bit somber for some people's tastes. Um, so I gathered up, this got mangled, I have a, a paper sorter uh, and that got mangled so that could be used and you can see how that green picks up that. This is old, I would say probably wedding wrapping paper with this um, forget-me-nots. So that kind of picks up on the lightest colors. This is just another couple shades of green. Um, this is out of a an art book, you know, one of those in stages kind of painting, how to paint things. This is plain old construction paper. This is some scrap, oh, I should probably not use that. Some scrapbook paper that I had cabbage dyed on. And then this is some awful, um, also scrapbooking paper, really thin. So I think what I will do, 
is, first of all, I don't know, uh, what, I, what I sort of held together first was this. No, I won't use all of that black, obviously, because I do want room for some other things. But to me, that looks just really dramatic. So maybe I would also put some of this underneath there just to. So I think, in essence, maybe the simplest way to understand what is going on here is to think of it as doing a collage. So let me begin by just getting a chunk of this green that is, and in fact, you know what? I think I'm just going to do what I did on the other side. On the other example is basically just wrap it. Oh, I guess I should show you what I'm doing here. Now, because this had been re-glued, or I mean, yeah, this envelope had been reclosed. Some of this is lifting. Now, it will be secured by the things that go above it, but um, so I think what I'm going to do, just to move this along, is basically, um, I think I'm going to be covering, there won't be any white left, so I'm going to essentially figure out where to trim this. And again, if I had miscalculated or it was wider than the paper, because of course with scraps that could very well happen. And I don't know, I doubt, <laughs> I doubt that this is what Claire did on hers, to be honest, but who knows. So again, I'm just basically tearing So that I would have a nice torn edge. I um, maybe what I should do is tack tack this down so I don't have to try to have three hands. To, so I don't feel like I need three hands too. And this is just again the first layer. I can go back in and this is more a convenience thing than anything to just tack it with the uh, glue stick. Okay, I'll finish tearing that in a minute, but let's do the back side at the same time. Again, um, not going to be overly concerned. Oops about how uh, well I'm covering the actual envelope because I will be adding other papers. But I, I think that most of us like the organic look of a torn edge versus a, something that we cut with a ruler or a knife. So again, just add a bit of glue here. And I guess I could have, and probably will switch to um, art glitter glue. So I hope that you are um, taking part in the um, the hop that Angela has put together. Um, everyone that I know is always looking for ways of using up scraps. Um, so I think that any viewer is bound to pick up a few a few new tips. Um, just from the, the few videos that I've seen so far.
One thing that I didn't, well, I did assemble a couple of supplies. And I guess I'll show you that as I get to them. Okay, we have that base. Now, I think that probably just want a small dose of that because it does seem more like the cooler greens are being used here. And of course, because this has some words on it, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to use less of it. So I'm just going to tear along that, which automatically, uh, along those words, which automatically sort of gives me a, a nice curved line. So I could do something like that. <laughs> Let's see, where's my other piece? And again, <laughs> this is this points out yet again the oxymoronic <laughs> process of scrap busting. Um you know, we say we're scrap busting, but yet we keep creating more scraps as we're doing this sort of thing. So I could put this here just as a little bit of, um, and let me do that. I should have. Um, oh, I see that isn't holding very well. That is sort of the pitfall of using, um, a glue stick sometimes you're not quite sure where you've ended up um let me use this perhaps no let me use this so there's more contrast so you can see what i'm doing i'm just going to and you can see this came out of like a kid's book about insects I have no idea if I'm using this whole piece, but it looks like I'm gluing it. And again, it's not going to matter if uh, this extends a bit beyond because I can always remove it if it is uh, you know, interfering with the plan later on. I think because you know how I feel about repeating elements, I'm going to glue this down here. Now, I suppose if a person was a diehard inker, you'd want to be inking as you go. I did ink on one yeah, on one of my other ones, one of my prototypes. But I think inking would not make sense here because we're talking about something that is fresh and green and, and alive, not grungy and old. Okay. So far, I'm just concentrating, well, other than that first, layer of paper. So far, I'm just concentrating on this first, on this one side. And I would suspect that I'm going to run out of time to do the other side, but you've seen four examples already, so I know that you're going to get uh, what's going on there. I'm going to let that corner extend beyond. This guy will probably get sacrificed. Too bad I cut around it. Um, we need a torn edge here. 
I'm going to tear all the way because, well, I guess I shouldn't presuppose that I'm using this on the other side because I may not. How did I have this? Now, I do want to get a few more elements in there. This or don't I? See, I'm thinking that my image will end up pretty well against the the black because that way I get the biggest bang for the for my buck but having little bits poking out here and there I guess doesn't hurt either I mean I could have something like that going on okay I'm going to do this and again it's basically just building layers and um, collage, an odd ball shaped collage. And I haven't forgotten. Oh, yeah, that would have been good. Glue it down to this, my white paper here. Um, I haven't forgotten about fibers either. I'll show you kind of what I'm thinking in a minute. So I'm just going to, again, I will, whoops, I got hooked on my bracelet. I, oh, I should put the glue on here because I will, I don't want to have more glue on there than I. Now, I didn't look at Claire's that carefully to see if she wrapped, whoops, if she wrapped her Looks like she handled each side separately. She handled each side separately. So, I mean, obviously you can do it both ways. Um, I think that um, this proves yet again the value besides the... <laughs> the uh, the wonder of having someone else's creation in your personal collection um, it also proves yet again that there's a very practical and sensible reason for supporting each other and buying each other's products is because we then use our little analytical minds to figure out Oh, that's what she did there. Oh, beautiful. You know, that kind of analysis. And I think I could probably live with that. There's kind of, or maybe if I angle it a bit, I'll get a little more black there. Yeah, I think I like the little more black. So... I'm not going to wrap it around, but because I have such a precise location in mind, I am going to fold this along here just so I know where I should be putting my glue. Um, yeah, I think that... Um, there is a lot 
a lot to be gained by watching all the videos. I mean, uh, it seems that, again, from the limited number of videos that have already appeared as I'm doing this, that, you know, people are using a variety of things. When I saw Angela's, um, the thing she did with the coffee mug, oh, wouldn't it have been nice if I had made a pencil mark on where I wanted this to be on the actual, oops, probably a little higher. Um, those coffee sleeves, you know, take out coffee sleeves. Kind of wish I was a takeout coffee kind of person. Okay. I think I'm just going, for the time being, I'm just going to leave that flap there. Because I don't know exactly what I'm doing on the other side. I sort of have a plan, but. Okay. So, I think that this is basically what my positioning is going to be like here. However, I did bring some other elements in. This is, uh, if you know anything about my daughter, you know she loves sort of pukey green. So this was some, this is where I'm getting those troublesome threads from. This was, there was a remnant from something that she, she had sewn. I think it might have been her grad dress or something. I don't know. So it's, it's, it's getting to be vintage. Um, and of course, I don't think this is silk, but it certainly um, tears nicely in phrase. So if I can work some of that in, I will. I have some of this trim. That, and I mean, this viney stuff just looks, I mean, it's so thematic. Um, I also have, like we used to sell this back in the day in our shop. And it used to be called Cinema, S-I-N-A-M-A-Y, in case you're ever in a spelling bee. Um, so I think this is a, an easy way to add some textural, you know, doesn't that just automatically make a difference? And have and having this, you know, sort of distorted and, and fraying a bit is even better. So let me hack off a little hunk here, just so it's easier to work with. And I will probably, you know, stretch that out a bit and distort that. This would be, I still like, you know, that strip of black there, so I don't want to lose that effect. Uh, because isn't the green against the black kind of very cool uh no is it gonna be too see sometimes it's just a little kitschy what i could do oh did you see the light bulb come on um i could glue this along the edge and then i'd have the effect of this little vine. So springy. <laughs> I mean, springy in the sense that it's hard to hold on to. I'm just trying to get a feel for this before I commit to gluing it down. Oh, and this, it keeps getting caught on everything because of the little pokey edges. I don't know if I like that, to be honest. It sort of, it competes with this part. Hmm. Okay, I do know that I like this, so let's just bite the bullet here. And, um, it's gonna be a bit of a trick. I might have to, you know, there's a break there, but that's okay. Um, 
let me use my fabric tack. I'll do the, the sort of the bound edge there. And maybe just dot here and there where I know it'll be covered by the um, by my image. I do like this. It kind of matches that. I won't glue this down until I've had a chance to reconsider what's going on here. Just by holding down this bound edge, I should be able to have a little more control over what's going on here. I'm going to keep it fairly close to the edge, but I'm still going to maintain that little strip of black. You know, in home decor circles, they always say, use a bit of black in every room uh, to ground, to anchor something. And uh, those of us that have like dabbling in that sort of, uh, both in our own homes and for other people, uh, I think it's a pretty tried and true. You know what? I could just break that off. Because it doesn't want to cooperate anyway. Too bad. Maybe I can slide this up so we don't have that sharp edge. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. That way you can't really see where it breaks off. I mean, where it ends. Now this could actually be opened up, but is it necessary? Probably not. I just talked myself into it. I'm going to pry this open simply because it gives me another chance to add some texture. Now, if that turns out to be too much, I can uh, let's see what we can do with this. And again, you know, sometimes a person pre-selects some stuff, especially uh, for video purposes, and then, uh, you know, you kind of, you have your, your mind made up and your heart set on, on using it. And then you realize, oh, no, but the project, it, it's not what the project calls for. And then you have to get over your, your disappointment and do what is right for the good of the project. Okay, now this definitely elongates it. Now I could, what I could do is not trim it till after the fact and just add some. Oh, I like that. Okay, that's the plan. I'm going to, oh, this is going to be an issue though. Hmm. Let's see what happens. I, I think you're probably a step ahead of me in thinking, okay, but what about the the glue? It's going to bleed through that. And chances are it will. Maybe if I... Maybe if it bleeds through... <laughs> if it bleeds through enough, maybe we can convince the viewer... That it was actually variegated green. And again, less of an issue where, oh, I might have to do another couple little pinches here. That's a, okay, that's not too, too bad. Yeah. If this stays blotchy like that, then we know that 
We're going to pretend that that was the plan. Okay, you guys are all with me on that, right? That is going to be, we're going to, whoops, we're going to say that that was the original intent to get that variegated effect. I'm not crimping or pleating anything here because, of course, this will be the flat part underneath the, because I said that, okay, I don't, I don't want to, I hope you can see all this. I don't want these dangly things to go beyond the edge of them. So that's going to be about there. So I can do another, whoops, flung that thing across the room. Another inch or so. And I will do the rest of the pleating once I secure. So this is not exactly wanting to grab here, is it? And if necessary, I could flatten those later, but we do know that they would flatten uh, in a journal as well. And we are content to let that happen. Okay, so I'm not, I don't want to cut too short, so I'm going to just leave that as it is. I'm going to assume that this is where, so because, sorry, because, I'm apologizing to the cinnamon, because this was folded here, it is, It kind of wants to break there. I don't really want that thicker ridge, but yet when I pull it apart, it wants to totally separate. So I think what I'm going to do, where I know that, that this is going to be covered by the image, I can pretty safely Spread a bit of glue there just to help. <laughs> I don't know if it's helping, but it's the placebo effect. I can pretend that it's helping. Like there is so little for the glue to actually uh, make contact with when it's something so open weave. Um, Okay, I think we'll for, we're going to forget this. We're going to forget anything here. Um, you know that sometimes I really prefer the simplicity and the, the drama, or the drama of simplicity. Okay. I think I'm going to call that a day. So for this, I'm going to pull out the big guns, the uh, Fabri-Tac, because even though this is backed, it's going to be... I'll do the, the main body of this with Fabri-Tac, and then, if I, then I'll probably, you know, slip under there with some... Um, with the needle... Uh, point of the um, what should we call it art glitter glue, but I will get the thickest ele or the the more solid elements secured with fabric tech. And again, the reason for that. And if you don't have fabric tech in your arsenal, um, I don't know. I think you're missing. A very effective tool. Yes, it's pricey, but you know, that's how it is when something works. <laughs> oh, you know what? I probably didn't need to put glue there because it's going to extend past. Oh, well. Sometimes when you get those glue blotches, that bleeding happening... Um, it, um, 
it actually it does you know as it dries sometimes the color just reverts back to what it was so i don't want to glue this down to the <laughs> Something is stuck. Okay. okay, I'm just going to apply a bit of pressure here so I'm get a pretty decent grab on the solid parts. Oh, I like it. And then I will worry about that other bit in a bit. That other bit in a bit. Okay, let's, we were using this, and I probably, okay, I said the envelope was nine inches, so I can probably let this remain, um, extending beyond it, because in a, um, oh no, it hooks on the, edge of the page so I'll leave it longer knowing that in an actual journal application something might have to be um, trimmed now in each of these cases Claire's and the ones that I did. Um, it always was set up so that it would. Sorry, I, it's like, will that next word ever come out? I hate listening to people like that on YouTube. Um, what I'm trying to spit out here is. In all of, in both Claire's examples and the ones that I, the ones that I did, they all hook on the bottom of the page. But there's no reason why it couldn't be done at the top of the page as well. Right? Right. glue has kind of dried up a bit while I was dilly-dallying. And I guess worst case scenario, if this does, um, you know, look kind of goofy once it dries, I could always, uh, I'm going to leave this extra long. It, I won't need that much, but um, again, sorry, I'm thinking. If if it does stay blotchy like this, then I could, you know, try to figure out another thing to to use to to disguise that. Or uh, actually, it probably is going to stain. And just kind of ignore that for the time being. Now this. Okay, I'll tell you what I was planning for the back. And then probably we'll be ripping that off. This was a fussy cut out of who knows what. Oh, I wonder if it would have been a... Uh, somebody's digital. So the black might work equally well on this side. Now I'm not going to do this because you can see it does take time. Plus I want to get in there and clean up a lot of those things. But clearly I don't need all of this. So I'm going to... And of course this side too will need more... collaging sort of and 
and I think I'm not going to bother gluing this side down just yet because I may decide that I want to slip something underneath there. There's kind of a different color thing going on here, so I could use kind of that blushy pink color as well as some greens. And if this, you can see this guy wants to break right there. I could always tear that off and just graft it onto someplace else. Um, okay, let's pretend both sides are done and see what we have wrought here. So my knee needs to be on this side. And again, it is going to be kind of extraordinarily tall here because I did use a nine inch envelope. So, I mean, more than likely that's going to break off, but I guess for now, I think I better prune it right now. Mm, I think I have this one has to go too. It's not as good as I would hope. Let me, these are not, I shouldn't be using these little scissors, but. You know, it's just like when you're pruning a real branch on a real tree. You don't want to leave little knobby things like this. Goodness gracious me. I should have known that was going to happen. I've done it when it was easier. But it's done. Now, because this is wrapped around a page, even when you take it off, okay, that would be visible. But what I could do is glue something, sorry, glue something on here to sort of cover that blue for one thing. I think I better do that. So I could use... that so that would be fine that adds another oh that would be fine <laughs> ah, okay so essentially what I'm doing is hiding that blue which is not part of the plan but I'm also adding because this is black is on both sides I'm also adding um a couple it's peeking out in a couple of places so let me okay let me figure out where i need to put this and i think this is totally brilliant if i do say so myself i'm going to roughly do a little outline and you probably can't see this but i'll show you soon a little outline where the glue should be. That way I keep my positioning that I've agonized over because you know the future of the world depends on this. And so there's the little outline. I know exactly where to put the glue. See, I'm back to using this pin in my uh, is that how I did it? Make the puzzle fit. I guess I had it 
I can peel this off. I must have had it a little further over. Okay, maybe that wasn't the most brilliant thing that's ever been shared on YouTube. I want to come this way, so I'm going to apply. I'm not going to go as far that way. I'm going to add a bit of glue here because I want these little guys covered up too. And I wanted, remember, I wanted that little sliver of black to show. Now, before I press it down totally, yeah, that's better. It does a better job of encasing those little pokey edges of the cinema. And it also gives me another little sliver of black along here. Oh, this needs a little TLC here to catch. Again, with that extra bulk in there with the uh, the lumpiness of the cinema it um, okay you know you've got enough glue when it oozes out that's a time honored tradition in the world of making journals and if you're new to the channel, or maybe you've been watching but it have, haven't connected the dots, um, I kind of take pains not to say junk journals, simply because I think that devalues what we're doing. We're making handmade journals, and what we choose to put the, into them is um, our choice. It may be junk by some people's definition. It may be pre-loved. I think this is stiff enough that I don't have to worry about putting glue under there. Oh, but I have to glue this down. Huh. Even though, you know what, I think I'm going to, I'll try this first. Uh, I was going to say I should use Fabri-Tac, but we know that Fabri-Tac has a tendency, it dries clear, but it dries with a shine. So we don't, this is kind of a rustic-y thing. We don't want little bits of shine coming through. <clears throat> anyway, that's just my idiosyncrasy of mine I think that um, maybe in those of us in the community those of us doing this kind of work or this kind of pastime you know there there isn't even agreement among all, all of those people as to what's what so we can hardly expect our adoring public to understand what we're doing if we can't understand or explain what we're doing so anyway that's my five cents worth on that and again i'm not going to be too concerned if every single little uh, strand and vine there isn't glued down because it just helps add some dimension if it's not Anyway, I don't know what you think, but I am loving this. Um, I don't know how long that will stay. Maybe I should just try. I could put a clamp on it too, so we get a wee bit of hold. Another thing that is the cat's meow, if you'll, let's use a green one, are these, uh, I think they're quilters clips. I have them in, a f in two sizes. One I bought in a fabric store and one I bought online. Of 
course, the online one. Isn't everything online smaller than you think it's going to be? Even though you look at the dimensions. Um, anyway, they hold like crazy. So hopefully that will catch. I will probably end up trimming this, making it a little more jagged. What I could do is just fray it a bit. Fray it and give it a little yank and a little twist. And that automatically looks a little more. Okay, I'm not sure about this. Maybe I should cut a few of those guys off. I want it to look like I got a haircut, but I do want it a little less pokey. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop here. Remember, please, if you haven't already subscribed, I would love if you would do so. We are uh, inching our way to 2,000 subscribers, so that would really help me out. Uh, plus, it would um, expose you to my content. Okay, and uh, of course, a reminder about tomorrow's live sale on um, the Traveling Crafter, 3 p.m. Central. And of course, you'll also want to tune in tomorrow to the hop for uh to see what carol from crinkled path journals is doing so thank you again angela for including me in this and we will see you guys in the next one bye